now let's see graph based protocols see uh, there are two reasons why we go for this graph based protocol one thing is whenever we use any locking it is also based on locking only whenever you use locking the problem is deadlock right and we have to avoid deadlock uh, in two ways so one way is if we can break that condition of hold and wait you can avoid the deadlocks that is what we have seen already and the second way is if we can order the resources if you can provide some ordering between the resources and if you can enforce the process or transactions to ask for the data items in that order then you can avoid deadlock see what is what i mean to say is see why do we get a deadlock let us say there is transaction ti and then there is transaction tj right now we get a deadlock when a wants a lock on a sorry ti has a lock on a and tj has a lock on b and again if ti wants a lock on b and tj wants a lock on a when these two locks are still with ti and tj we are going to get a deadlock right which means the order in which this one is requesting is some order and the order in which this one is requesting is other order now if we can make sure that all of them request them in the same order then there will be uh, no problem of this deadlock right therefore there has to be some ordering between the data items if you can measure, maintain that ordering and if you can you know every every transaction can obtain the deadlocks I mean, uh, locks only in that order then we can avoid deadlocks and the second thing is we want to see that the transactions are you know once you finish the transactions all of them fall in a schedule in such a way that it is serializable right now these two can be implemented using graph based protocol i'll read out about it see this even though the name is graph based protocol it is implemented as a tree protocol so which means even though the name is saying that it is a graph protocol what we actually have is a tree right why we do why do we have a tree is we don't want cycles because cycles are the main reason to get the deadlock and it is going to spoil the ordering that is why we are going to go for you know a trees so i mean to say it is going to your data our base is going to be arranged like this a b c something like this right you are going to have a kind of tree like this okay now it is the directed acyclic graph known as database graph so whatever graph you have it is a tree which is directed directions will be from top to down and it will be acyclic there will be no cyclic no cycles and it is also called as database graph now advantage is we can completely avoid deadlocks so by using this we are going to avoid deadlocks i'll show you how in tree based proto in tree protocol the only lock instruction allowed is exclusive lock so we have only lock uh, exclusive locks here and each transaction ti can lock a data item at most once so only once you can lock the data item and following the below rules some rules are given here now see this the first lock by ti may be on any data item so whenever you take the first lock that can be anywhere either you can lock at the root or you can lock at b or c or d wherever but then subsequently a data item can be locked by ti only if the parent of the data item is currently locked by ti so what it means is let us say if ti has locked initially data item d then later it should not lock data item b but in case if it wants both b and d then it should first lock b then only it is going to lock d by writing this rule you will make sure that whenever a date you know you need a sequence of data items you will always start from the top and then you come down so which means some ordering in which you are going to ask for the locks is going to be maintained now if everyone is going to follow that order there will be no deadlocks isn't it there will be no cycle and no deadlocks got it hmm. okay now data items may be unlocked at any time so unlocking can be done any time so it is not like you know you are going to have uh, two phases so you can you can unlock any time and you need not even wait till commit right and then a data item that has been logged and unlocked by ti cannot subsequently log by ti which means once you have logged and unlocked don't ask it again that is the meaning of it okay now let's see the example here 
now find out whether this particular uh, uh, you know uh, schedule is following whatever we, rules we discussed there now what is the rule so you can start off with any node but then once you start with that node you are you are not supposed to ask for a parent of that okay now let's see this now initially t1 is asking for lock on b yes lock on b is allowed and then after b it is asking for e yes you can get e because its parent is already locked and after that is asking for d yes you can get d because its parent is already locked now it is unlocking b yes you can unlock b and then it is unlocking e you can unlock e and then it is locking g all right see you can lock g because d is already locked and it is still there and now it is unlocking d yes now if you see the order you are not asking for a lock without having a lock on the parent anytime all right but then unlocking can be done any any way either you can unlock the parent or child it is not an issue but then only requirement is whenever you are asking for a lock you are supposed to ask for a lock only if the parent is already locked okay now let's look at transaction t2 now d is locked yes d is locked and after d h is locked yes after d you can lock h and then d is unlocked yes that is unlocked that can be done and again h is unlocked yes not an issue so you are going to lock and unlock in such a way that always parent is locked and here it is starting with b yes it is starting with b here okay now after b e is being locked right yes after b e can be locked and after that e is unlocked and b is unlocked yes unlocking can be done in any way fine so now if you observe this if any schedule follows these rules you can clearly prove, prove that you are going to, all those are going to be conflicts realizable so if you want to see we can draw the graph and we can find it out now let's say i want to draw the graph and see whether it is conflict realizable or not i am trying to draw the precedence graph now if you see precedence graph t1 t2 and t3 let's see where the conflicts are now b is being locked so whenever it is exclusive locked you can assume that it is being locked for right operation therefore every exclusive lock is going to be a conflict with other other transactions exclusive lock given that both are locking the same data item now which means if you look at b if there is any other transaction which is having lock on b it is going to be a conflict so if you see this clearly there is a conflict between these two got it so which means t1 and then t3 is the order right okay and then if you look at d yes there is a conflict between these two therefore t2 and then t1 right okay and if you look at h there is no transactions with h here and there is no transaction with h here okay fine that is over and now if you look at e there is a trans there is a lock on e here it is also saying that t1 and then t3 yes not an issue and then d log d so if you look at log d uh, he only this is the one nothing else okay that's it and if you look at g nothing else that's it and then if you look at b it is over if you look at e it is over that's it right so if you look at this this is the graph precedence graph now precedence graph is clearly showing that there are no cycles therefore it is definitely conflict serializable so any schedule which is going to follow the rules that we have discussed till now is going to be conflict serializable as well as it is deadlock free okay fine Hi. if you have planned to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and iit roorkee's ranking is 400 if you are happy to get into iit roorkee then getting into universities better than iit roorkee is easier compared to getting into iit roorkee and looking at the salaries 
for computer science or for, uh, for software jobs if you have done your masters in computer science in us the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year so even if you take an average of 1 crore per year your savings will be much higher than the salaries in india after taxes and your cost of living you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year and in india the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs so your savings will be much greater than the salaries in india and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then lor guidance and gre and english test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral which which means without any security now you can get education loan getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee the amount of uh, fee that you have you have a range of uh, universities you can apply for 10 lakh universities 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities but whatever it is you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it after you get a job and then we do visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join game of visas so the answer is we have 90 percent success rate 99 percent success rate and these are all the destinations that we guide the students to so we guide students to any country that you want to go so now it is not just usa we guide to uk germany australia canada so we guide we guide students to all the countries we work with all the destinations and if you are interested in going abroad you have to just drop us a message on this whatsapp number 9494 555 454 okay thank you